We now know where the NFL schedule makers have the commanders playing and when your quarterback faces his old coach in week one prime time against the team that drafted him in week 10 and it's revenge game time in week eight. The Carson Wentz redemption tour, Chris, I don't know if I said that right. The Carson Wentz redemption tour, Chris, is set and we're taking you through each venue right now on the Locked On Commanders podcast. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, Commanders fans, to the Locked On Commanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, and we are free and available on all platforms. And we also thank you for making us your first listen or your first view of the day. I am David Harrison, covering the Commanders for Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, and my co-host, Chris Russell, the Rooster, one half of the Russell and Medhurst show on the Team 980. Find Chris and Pete there Monday through Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time or anytime along with a show on the Odyssey app. When we're not there or here, we are on Twitter at dharrison82, at russellmania621, and at LO Commanders. All right, we thank you again for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen or your first view. If you're joining us via YouTube, as many of you have done, which we appreciate, and thank you, and keep subscribing. The NFL schedule for the 2022 season, David, dropped on Thursday night, and we now know the path, most of the path, the Washington Commanders will have to follow, and it starts week one at FedEx Field against... Doug Peterson, Trevor Lawrence, Trayvon Walker, and Brandon Scherf. Don't forget, he's coming home. And the Jacksonville Jaguars, a 1 o'clock Eastern time kickoff on Fox for week one and the home opener. And guess what, guys? As we roll through the first half of the schedule, you're going to see some things and hear some things that you like because week two, the commanders maybe get another break. Maybe. Who knows? They're at the Detroit Lions, David. One o'clock also on Fox for week two of the NFL season. So a good chance, good chance to start off two. And oh, week three, it's Carson Wentz versus one of his former teams, but at FedEx Field. A one o'clock game also on Fox against the Philadelphia Eagles and Jalen Hurts. Week four, it's on the road to the Dallas Cowboys. Again, a one o'clock Fox game, week four inside the division. That's your first four games in the start of the 2022 schedule. And then just going through the next four or the next, uh, I guess, group of games, week five, Tennessee Titans at FedEx Field, 1 p.m. on CBS. Week six, short week at the Chicago Bears, Thursday night football, on Amazon Prime, that's right, 8.15 uh, on Thursday night, week six at the Chicago Bears, followed by week seven at home against the Green Bay Packers with a little extra time to prepare, one o'clock on Fox. Week eight, David, this is where it gets really interesting. <laughs> at Indianapolis, Carson Wentz makes his return to his long sort of home well not really 425 fox that seems to be the big national game right there week eight for the commanders and the colts and then it's reunion time of a different sort week nine kirk cousins makes his return to fedex field one o'clock on fox as the minnesota vikings come to landover maryland david wow that's an interesting first half or wow. so of the schedule What's your toughest game on that slate that you can see right away? You know, I mean, I think the the low hanging fruit answer to that question, right, is obviously going to be at Indianapolis week eight, 425 p.m., you know, on Fox and you got the former team and all the trash talking going on during the offseason and the he's not the right guy for us. And Matt Ryan is in the building uh, and all these things. And uh, but I'm, I'm going to go Chicago Bears. I think week six, that that short turnaround, you know, you got the Tennessee Titans in week five. Uh, you know, you're at home, so that's obviously a beneficial thing. But then you you have that that quick week uh, where you come back and you got to face the Chicago Bears and you're in Chicago and uh, Soldier Field is, is not a friendly environment for visiting teams. And even if the Chicago Bears aren't really doing all that well, uh, one of the benefits of 
having Soldier Field is it's really, really small. Like if you've never been to, to Soldier Field, yeah. if you ever go, you will be absolutely shocked as how small that stadium is and what it absolutely. does is it really helps you know i mean chris obviously you've been there like it helps it helps them fill it up relatively easily even mm-hmm. if there's if attendance is maybe a little bit down it still gets filled up pretty quickly and all those fans are right on top of you yep. it's thursday night it's chicago it's prime time it's a quick turnaround i think to me that is the toughest game in this first half of the season you know uh, it, it, it i could go a lot of different ways here um yeah. you know clearly that indianapolis game is going to be a lot of drama and like a lot of con- or not controversy but a lot of you know again a, a lot of media type stuff but for me david the toughest game a, at least the way i see it is and i understand where you're going with the chicago bears any short game short week but I'm going to go with the Tennessee Titans game, A, because the Titans were so good last year, even though Ryan Tannehill shouldn't surprise or shouldn't scare anybody. We know about Derrick Henry. We know uh, you know, about some of the things that they are still going to bring. But it's after a divisional game at the Cowboys, which you figure, and really after two divisional games, so you figure mm-hmm. you're going to be a, maybe a little bit emotionally beat up, if not physically beat up. Then you got to come home for a Tennessee team that can run the ball all over you yeah. and run the ball down your throat. So to me, that to me is the toughest game if I had to pick uh, just one. Which is the game that you're most excited to see? I think, I mean, it's a low-hanging fruit, but it's got to be that Colts game. I mean, just there's just the drama of it. You know what I mean? And we all like to try to try to claim that we don't like drama. and we don't, Whatever. We all like drama. Like, this is a, a game of competition. It's sure. about, you know, putting one guy on his butt and, and on all this. Like, you like the drama. You know, don't, li- don't lie about not liking the drama. Um, and I mean, honestly, look, with, the, the, with as much as Chris Ballard is talking now, when he really has no reason, you know, uh, a lot of Colts fans, by the way, decided to tell us that, uh, it's the media's fault that Chris continues to talk about Carson Wentz. Um, anyway, we won't get into that. But, uh, you know, Chris Ballard is talking this much about Carson Wentz. I can just imagine how much he's going to say uh, leading up to this game. You know, and, and honestly, by then, he'll probably take the high road and, you know, oh, you know, we're happy that he's, you know, doing well. Or, you know, depending on what Washington is doing, if they're doing well, we're happy he's doing well, happy to see him succeed, but we're happy with the direction of our team and da 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 da. But I mean, just the drama of it, you know, it's going to be loud. You know, the fans are going to boo and they're, they're going to do all this craziness and uh, super excited just to see Carson go back into Indy though, and, and come away with a win against that team. Uh, if he can do that, that would be interesting <laughs> for me. The game that I'm most excited to see is the, actually the next week, week nine against the Minnesota oh. Vikings at FedEx field. Now there's a couple of reasons they've already, this organization has gone against Kirk cousins since he left as a free agent. It was a, I think a Thursday night game and, 2019 after Jay had been fired, I think. Uh, and it was really a nondescript kind of game. And Kirk didn't play all that well. And the Vikings didn't score a lot of points. But this is Kirk Cousins, David, first trip back to FedEx Field. Uh, and I get to see Kevin O'Connell, who I covered for a little while as the new Vikings head coach. Uh, and a guy we've had on the show, Ben Kotwika, is a special teams coordinator coach with the Minnesota Vikings. So there's a little bit of personal, uh, I guess, you know, wanting to see a couple of guys that I'm fond of, and I want to genuinely see how Kirk Cousins performs at FedEx Field against a defense that either is going to be, again, worn down a little bit because it's nine weeks into the season, or they're going to be ready to prove a point to Kirk Cousins. So that I am excited to see that and that's just part the first half of the commander schedule david <laughs> yeah and i mean look we didn't even get into all the storylines i mean you got the dallas cowboys game obviously you know last year we had to wait a little bit uh for that kind of stuff and, yeah. and again i mean the tennessee titans game alone Fedarian mathis like that that could be the game where you kind of look at it and go ah that's why you guys drafted Fedarian mathis <laughs> you know what i mean i'm not saying they drafted only for derrick henry but you know that's it's going to be a lot of fun, but that's just the first half of the commander schedule. Uh, we are going to talk about the rest of the regular season schedule and identify the toughest and most exciting matchups in the back half of the regular season here in just a moment. But first, our partners at Bet Online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. Find all the latest odds, news, and sports development, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball scores, fights, and even next season's NFL futures. Some week one odds are already going up, ladies and gentlemen. Bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to the playoffs, esports, and more. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in the action at Bet Online, where the game starts. 
All right, thanks for making the Locked On Commanders podcast your first listen and your first view of the day. If you're watching on YouTube, along with David Harrison, I'm Chris Russell. You can follow David, of course, as you can see on the screen. If you're watching on YouTube at dharrison82, read him, si.com's Fan Nation. You can follow me at WrestleMania621 and the show at LO Commanders, where we have the full schedule, of course, uh, and the preseason slate listed uh, at LO Commanders. All right, David, continuing now with the back half of the Commanders 2022 second half regular season schedule, and we get to it right away. Week 10, after, uh, again, the reunion or the return, I should say, to, uh, to Indianapolis, then Kirk Cousins return to FedEx Field. We have three straight weeks of reunions, returns, what have you, because Carson Wentz, on Monday Night Football, uh, Week 10 returns to Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, 815. Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, ESPN, Carson Wentz. I'm sure he'll be greeted wonderfully by those classy Eagles fans. Week 11, short week, back on the road. Hmm. At the Houston Texans, 1 p.m. on Fox, Week 11. Week 12, Kyle Smith. Okay, maybe that's not that much of a return, but he's basically the assistant GM for the Atlanta Falcons. They come to FedEx Field, and they will visit the Washington Commanders at 1 o'clock on Fox. Week 13, back on the road at the New York Giants, 1 p.m. on Fox. Week 13 for the Commanders. Then finally the bye week comes in week 14. Think about that. Some good there. And some bad, which we will tackle, of course, on the next edition of the Locked On Commanders uh, podcast. Week 15, David, a familiar opponent, the New York Giants at FedEx Field. Now, what isn't determined about this particular game is whether the game will be on Saturday or Sunday. We don't know that yet. That'll be based on probably both teams and their records, and whether NFL Network wants that game on a Saturday primetime type of window uh, for their regular season coverage. So we have to wait on the exact day for that, but it's the New York Giants two games in a row sandwiched around a bye week for the Washington Commanders. And then week 16, Christmas Eve afternoon at the San Francisco 49ers, Trent Williams, Kyle Shanahan, so on and so forth. Uh, And who will be the quarterback? We don't know. Week 17, back home for possibly Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. 1 p.m. on Fox. And then wrapping up the regular season, week 18. Time to be determined. Network to be determined against the Dallas Cowboys. So, David, they end up with two straight games at home and three of their last four as we focus kind of on that playoff stretch, as I mentioned, you have the Giants a couple of times in a row. You have the late buy, uh, and then you have three again of four at home. Now, home field has not been a great advantage for Washington, but if you're looking for a favorable playoff stretch, all things considered, that might be as favorable of a playoff stretch as you could ask for. Yeah, I mean, you know, getting getting three of your final five games at home, I mean, you know, regardless of of your history and, and, and what the matchups might be. But I mean, Cleveland, Cleveland with Deshaun, you know what I mean? Uh, in week 17 and then Dallas with Dak coming to town, like, yeah, they're coming to town, but they're coming to town looking to, uh, to do some things to you. Uh, for me, I mean, the most exciting match I think in the back half of this one, uh, you know, Philadelphia Eagles on Monday night. That's, that's the obvious. I think that's the obvious answer, but I'm going to go a little bit outside the obvious and, and I'm actually going, uh, to the San Francisco 49ers on the road week 16. That's a playoff team. Uh, NFC championship contender, you know what I mean? And everybody wants to know, like, is it going to be Trey Lance? Is it going to be Jimmy G? What's really going on there? Where, whereas by the time we get to week 16, we're going to know that answer. We're going to know the answer because, I mean, even honestly, week one, like they could roll Jimmy G out there, but by week five or six, it could be Trey Lance's show. Mm-hmm. I'm very interested because when you when you look across the NFL, obviously you want to win your division first, and, and we all understand that. But you also have to kind of keep an eye on the other competitors, and the 49ers are – one of those teams. So as we see them go through, you know, three divisional games in their last five, I also want to see how they stack up to this competitor. And if it is Trey Lance, is this competitor looking like a team that's going to stay 
in a comp- competitive level uh, with that new quarterback or not. So that's to me, there's a lot of intrigue in that game for some in 2022 reasons, right? But also some future reasons. And again, that game at San Francisco on Christmas Eve afternoon can be a short week and a really long travel, depending on what the NFL decides to do with the Week 15 New York Giants game. As I mentioned, it could be on a Saturday or a Sunday. So if it's on a Sunday, it could be a real short week to Saturday afternoon in San Francisco or (laughs) Santa Clara uh, and a really long travel, 3,000 plus miles. Yeah. Uh, so that could be something to keep an eye on. For me, I mean, you you know, you uh, I've, of course highlighted the most exciting, juicy matchup: Carson Wentz, Philadelphia at Philly Monday Night Football. So I'll go elsewhere. I'll just say this: I expect Deshaun Watson's suspension to be long over by the time the Cleveland Browns roll in. I believe that game's on New Year's Day at FedEx Field. So to me, that could very well be a win and you stay alive or win and maybe you're in type of game against a premier opponent, you would think, with Deshaun Watson and Miles Garrett and Nick Chubb and all those guys and that offensive line, so on and so forth for the Cleveland Browns. So that's a real good litmus test, real good juicy conference spike versus conference uh, matchup. So I'll go there. And the road game to watch for me uh, real quickly here is going to be the Houston Texans. And why, David? That's a Sunday afternoon against what we think is going to be a bad team and a quote-unquote easy game to win after a Monday night road game in Philadelphia Again, a really short week plus a long trip to Houston, Mm -hmm. and your emotions are probably going to be spent regardless of what happens the previous Monday night, but especially if you find a way to win in Philadelphia. That's going to be where I see, okay, does this team have a certain level of resiliency? Yeah, absolutely. Look, trap games, you know, typically we talk about trap games coming ahead of big time games. Trap games has come after as well. You kind of kind of feel yourself a little bit Mm -hmm. and that fatigue. In and kind of punches you in the mouth. The Houston Texans come out super motivated. Uh, you know, plus, I mean, you're looking at the Texans, the Falcons, you could be if you're an organization be saying, like, hey, this is kind of our easy stretch. And then you have the Giants. And and that's where I'm looking at, Chris. I'm looking at week 13 on the road in New York against a divisional opponent because, and here's here's the reason why. If Washington loses that game, and we you've we've been through this enough times, you've got two weeks to chew on that. Yeah. Not just the week after that game. You got a whole by week to continue talking about how Danny Dimes or whoever's quarterback in the Giants just beat the Washington Commanders and is coming to town after the bye week to do it again. That is not a content schedule I want to deal with. I don't want to wish it on you either. So that for that, for somewhat selfish reasons, but also, I mean, the fan base, right? You guys don't want that either. Uh, obviously, that is a road game I am watching on the back half of the schedule. All right, good call on that. Didn't think about it that way, but you're absolutely right. So there we have, guys, the Washington Commanders 2022. Regular season schedule, plenty of storylines to go around, and make sure you check out Locked on NFL as well for the most compelling league side and league wide storylines from the schedule release for all 32 teams. But we're not done here yet, guys. Stay with us as we get set to make our gut reaction picks. Instant schedule release, way too early. Fantastic, super groovy, fun time. Commanders win loss projections that are surely to be wrong. And we'll do that thanks to birthday cake frosting, right? What a best way to celebrate the schedule release, and all of our bad picks with birthday cake frosting. Imagine dipping your finger, right? Who's done this? Of course you've done it. Into that tub of birthday cake frosting. Hopefully your hands are clean. And then opening your eyes and realizing that it was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. That's what it's like, guys, to eat a birthday cake puff from our friends at Built. I just got a bunch of birthday cake puffs. Oh, mm. I've told you how good they are. I've never had anything like this before. And the birthday cake stuff is just out of this world. I got some mini bites a couple of months ago, and they were terrific too. If you haven't tried the puffs, we'll let you in on a little secret because that's, you know, we care about you guys, and that's what friends do. It's a chocolate-covered marshmallow protein bar, uh, but flavored like a marshmallow. Protein-infused. It's totally healthy for you. So make every day your birthday and celebrate with Built's Birthday Cake 
puffs. Oh, so good. And again, they're all healthy for you. You are not going to regret this decision. So go to built.com and get birthday cake puffs now to celebrate the schedule release. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Locked 15, 15% off at built.com. Wrapping up this episode of the Locked On Commanders podcast. It is time, Chris. We've gone through the entire schedule. We've kind of picked some games to watch, some of our favorites that we're looking forward uh, to seeing this season. But now it is time, like you said, for our instant 2022 regular season record predictions. And look, guys, we're going to do this probably a couple times over over the offseason and into the preseason and kind of give it's got like mock drafts, right? We're not going to do it every week, but every once in a while, we'll kind of look at how the landscape maybe changes. We'll see some camps. We'll see some OTAs and maybe we'll come back and be like, guys, it's not looking too good. Or we'll come back and be like, guys, it's looking amazing. And we'll update these. But this is our instant, literally a knee jerk reaction, which everybody always tells you, Chris, right? Don't go off of knee jerk reactions. But here we are. We're going to go off of knee jerk reactions. Um, I'll tell you right now, I've got it on a spreadsheet, so we're keeping tabs. We're keeping the receipts. If you want to keep the receipts and call us out for them at a later date, by all means, feel free to do so. Chris, we'll start with the first four games of the season. We got the Jacksonville Jaguars coming to town to open the season. I've got the Washington Commanders coming away uh, with a win there. Carson Wentz sticks it to his old head coach, Doug Peterson. Brandon Scherf comes home and lo- and leaves with a loss, which he's used to doing, so he'll be okay. <laughs> Week two at the Detroit Lions. Uh, you mentioned it, an opportunity to potentially start 2-0. I have the commander starting 2-0, beating the Detroit Lions. But it's not all gravy. This is not a homer show. We try to be as honest as we can. Week three, Philadelphia Eagles. I do have them losing that first matchup with the, against the Philadelphia Eagles. It just kind of seems like it's in the cards. You know what I mean? That's just kind of how it feels. And then the Dallas Cowboys. Look, I know what happened in 2020, but let's be honest, that, that wasn't the Dallas Cowboys team that you saw last year. And, and even, even this year, it's not the Dallas Cowboys. You're going to see they have come down a little bit, but I think they're still right now, they're kind of on top until somebody proves otherwise. So I've got them taking the L and that one finishing the first quarter of the season, first four games, two and two. All right, David. So you have them at two and two through four. Here's my four. And then I'll get to the next quartet after that. I have them as well, beating Doug Peterson, Brandon Sheriff, Trevor Lawrence, and the Jacksonville Jaguars on September the 11th to open up the year 1-0. and So we're in agreement there. Here's where we differ, though. Week two at Detroit. A lot of people are going to think this is a very easy game, a winnable game. I think Dan Campbell and the Lions fight you tooth and nail. I, I know they're not great, but I, I unfortunately see a disappointing loss here to drop to 1-1. One and one. But then I have them returning home in the face of adversity, people kicking them in the you-know-where, and beating the Philadelphia Eagles at FedEx Field. Maybe a railing falls on Jalen Hurts once again. Who knows? And going to 2-1 and one week 3, September the 25th. And then we both have them losing to the Cowboys and finishing up the first quarter of the season at 2-2. Two and two. Now, the next group of games against the Tennessee Titans, David, uh, I have them losing that game. I told you that was a game that I was most interested, basically, to see in the first half uh, of the season. Again, tough physical, uh, kind of beat you up, maul you to death, Tennessee Titans team. I don't think they're great, but I think they're a team that Washington's going to struggle a little bit with. But then I have them bouncing back on Thursday night football, Amazon Prime at Soldier Field in Chicago. You mentioned the small crowd, all that. Justin Fields. I'm not sold on Justin Fields. I know you're a big Ohio State guy. I'm not sold on him. I think the Washington Commanders beat the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field to improve to 3-3, three and three, and then come back and beat Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers and Matt LaFleur to go to 4-3. and three. And then just wrapping up the first grouping of the uh, games that we have here at Indianapolis in Carson Wentz's, again, return against his now former team, or one of his former teams, I have them losing and dropping to four and four. And then one more game as we kind of split it up with the 17-game schedule. So we got to go a little bit more than eight games here. Game number nine, week nine, against Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. At FedEx Field, November the 6th, I have them losing that game and finishing the unofficial, official first half of their year at four and five. David? 
Yeah, so for my back half of the first half, I actually have them beating the Tennessee Titans. I kind of look at this game, not scared of Ryan Tannehill, especially without A.J. Brown, even with Trey Burks, is not going to put it together necessarily in, in year one, I don't think. Uh, the Washington defense last year, the strength was run defense, right? Now you have Fenerian Mathis. You go out there, you force the ball into Ryan Tannehill's hands. I think uh, Washington comes out with a win there to move to 3-2. and two. Chicago, I love Justin Fields. Uh, the Chicago Bears apparently don't. They did nothing for him on offense this offseason so far. So I think Washington comes away with the win there. We agree on that one. The Green Bay Packers, I'm giving I'm giving Washington an L there. I mean, I think it could be a better game and a, and a closer game than a lot of people will probably assume coming into it. But I am going to give them the loss there. We agree as well with the loss against the Indianapolis Colts. And then I actually have them losing Kirk Cousins and the Vikings as well. So a three-game losing streak there, losing, falling to the Packers, then on the road in Indy, then back home against Minnesota, but don't hate me yet, guys, because the next three games <laughs> uh, I've got, or the next four games, actually, I've got wins in Philadelphia on Monday night, in Houston, Woo! at home against the Falcons, and then in New York, I've got four wins. Look, they went on a four-game win streak last year. They got a four-game win streak this year, entering into December, like you talked about, that, that critical stretch of December football. So going into the bye week, Chris, I've got this team sitting at eight and five. How about that? Well, I have them losing the Monday night game at Philadelphia and Wentz's return again to Philly, even though I had them beating Philadelphia in week three at home. So dropping to four and six at that point, then a short week, and then you come back and we have that road game uh, at Houston. All right, maybe they grind away through that game and get to five and six and then beating the Atlanta Falcons at FedEx Field to go to six and six, David. And then, much like you, a three game winning streak heading into the bye, back to above 500 at seven and six with a week 13 win on the road at MetLife Stadium against the New York Giants. So I have them at seven and six. You have them at eight and five heading into the week 14 bye, David. Yeah, look, that's not a bad place to be. You know what I mean? Um, Going coming out of the bye though, Chris, my four game win streak is actually a five game win streak Ooh. because I've got them beating the Giants back to back. I mean, look, if you can do it in New York the week, you know, the, the right. game prior, why can't you do it at home? Right. So I got them winning that game. I do have them dropping that that game to the San Francisco 49ers right now. I believe it's going to be Jimmy Garoppolo. Obviously, like I said, we'll redo this as as more information comes uh, to hand. Cleveland Browns, I've actually got them winning that game. Deshaun Watson, yes, he's you know he's probably going to be back, but I'm honestly not too scared of the Cleveland Browns right now, to be honest with you. Uh, so I've got them winning that game, and then I do have them losing again to the Dallas Cowboys, which is a bad way to close out the season. But Chris, you're ten and seven. I mean that that's 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 playoff contention. That's not bad. If you can win t ten games, even if you don't make the playoffs, that's something that's to look a, forward to. I, I mean that's a positive year, right? I, yep. I mean I. It's a positive year for this franchise. Let's put it that way. Uh, David, after the bye, I have them, like you, winning against the New York Giants and sweeping them at home, even though uh, new coaching staff, new regime, and some more talent. Certainly, uh, we will see. Who knows about the Giants quarterback situation? But 8-6, and six, beating the Giants, heading to San Francisco. And this was a tough one for me. Like you said, a lot of quarterback questions, instability. We don't know if it's Trey Lance. We don't know if it's Jimmy Garoppolo. But I have Washington winning at San Francisco and improving to 9-6. and six. So, yes, count it with me, boys and girls. Like David, he had a five-game winning streak. I have a five-game winning streak as yep. well for the Commanders. We just have slightly different games. So yep. both of us predicting a five-game winning streak. But, David? At nine and six, here's where I go off the tracks. I have them losing to Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns on January the 1st at FedEx Field to not so celebrate the new year and dropping to nine and seven. And then like you, I have them losing the next week, week 18 at home against the Dallas Cowboys. So I have them at nine and eight. You have them at 10 and seven. So, I mean, very, very close projections. And I mean, look, we both predict three game losing streaks. We also both predict five game winning streaks. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it's a little bit ironic the way you got the schedule ending where, you know, you got nine wins, you got two more games, you're in the playoff hunt, you need to win one or, or both of those two games and you'll lose because that's exactly what happened in Indianapolis last year. Um, it is. That's going to be a little bit of history repeating itself, <laughs> although I would say these last two games, Cleveland and Dallas, not going to be considered as much of a gimme 
as the two games that the Colts lost last year with Carson Wentz. But it'll it'll be interesting because I think, and you know, we'll get deeper into this. But the way we've talked about this whole Carson Wentz situation, I mean, you know, we talked mid mid November. If you're four and six, five and five, five and six, six and five mm-hmm. in mid November, I think you keep rolling with Carson Wentz, which means sure. that draft pick next year is going to be a second rounder. And then you end up at 10 and seven or nine and eight. Maybe you make the playoffs. Maybe you don't. It'll be interesting uh, to see how, but I think, I think most of our listeners, Chris would have expected us to be a little bit less optimistic about our projections. Well, the question for me will be not only what you just said, and I agree with you, but if you finish nine and eight, my projected record, and especially if you lose the last two games at home and say you don't make the playoffs, what do you do with Carson Wentz moving yeah. forward for year two when they can get out of the contract? That will be a question that we'll have to tackle next week, along with some schedule screw jobs. Mm-hmm. You'll want to hear this. We will tackle that again early next week, created here, right here on the Locked On Commanders podcast. We thank you guys for making us, again, your first listen and your first view of the day. If you're watching on YouTube, now make Locked On NFL podcast your second listen and watch the schedule. Well, it, it, it it's dark in terms of games being played, but it's lit up like the Empire State Building at night because the NFL just announced for 32 teams the entire schedule. The NFL never, ever, ever stops. Neither does Locked On NFL get insights and opinions from hosts, including Ross Jackson, Chris Carter, Tony Wiggins, and more, plus local Locked On NFL hosts repping 30, all 32 squads. There's no off season for real fans. Make sure you're subscribed to the Locked On NFL podcast on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. We'll be back, of course, after the weekend with all of that, plus the exhibition preseason schedule. You're going to want to wait to hear where the Washington commanders are heading on the road. So we'll be back with that. If you want to hop in, 301 615 3577, locked on Washington commanders at gmail.com. For David Harrison, who's covering the Washington commanders for SI.com's Fan Nation, I'm Chris Russell, one half of the Russell and Medher show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app. If you're out and about, please be safe, be kind to one another, don't drive like a maniac, and thank you for joining us right here on the Locked On Commanders Podcast.